And let me make that full screen. So this is PyScript Fun on, what is it, October the, I haven't got my glasses on properly, the 10th uh, uh, in 2024. And uh, it's a select trio here. Uh, and uh, of course, PyScript Fun is all about, yep, yeah, having fun and uh, showing and, uh, fun things that uh, folks might um, want to know about. Uh, and I happen to know that uh, I don't have anything to, that's fun to show. Well, not right now. I have lots of things that are fun to show in the future, but not quite yet. Um, but uh, I know Andrea, my esteemed colleague up over here, uh, has lots of things to show. And he has a particularly interesting thing to show for my other esteemed colleague who's over here, which is Josh. And it's all about uh, the farm and uh, and farmyard animals and without further ado I think that uh, perhaps Andrea you should start explaining things and at appropriate moments perhaps uh, Josh you might like to just explain why uh, this work has been going on and why it's so much fun so Andrea the floor is yours matey thank you very much and I think I should just share my screen uh... <laughs> all right Camera, so you can see my best internet connection ever. And, uh, you can see yourself, I believe. All right, we can see um, ourselves. Okay, now we can see yeah. the uh, now we can see GitHub. So this is about Josh' request or requirement, which is very reasonable. Um, in previous worker, if another eval execute is asked to the donkey, so to explain what is this about, basically, we released. Uh, a feature called the donkey because the donkey is going to do the worker stuff uh, on the on the other side of the of the of the web um it expose evaluate and and execute methods and so you can just import a donkey and bootstrap a donkey and ask the donkey to do all kind of things um like execute evaluate and, and stuff like that. And so what does the donkey do? Basically, it executes code, Python code from the main thread or from any other thread, actually. Um, it, it, it executes always in a fresh new sort of Python environment where you can we, we can pass a new globals, new locals. So there's no conflict between what you run before, what you're running now. Josh question was about how if 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 my if my code is containing an infinite while loop never stops executing or something that actually never never ne so you know when you're just typing code and testing stuff it might happen that you create sorry about this noise hopefully it's gone soon and it's gone um when you type code it doesn't matter if it's Python or any other programming language. You, you, you might, at some point, <laughs> create some infinite loop out of a regular expression that never stops executing, or some while loop, or some something. You, you forgot to increase the i <laughs> in the loop, and stuff like that. And so this is a perfectly reasonable thing to ask. At the same time, um, and yeah, you, you can see my highlight is on Farmer. Uh, because we're talking about donkeys, <laughs> so I thought that the farmer was uh, the donkey owner. <laughs> and so um, the farmer is actually what what is resolved as a <coughs> sorry as an asynchronous operation. So you await the donkey to bootstrap because once it bootstrap, you can evaluate, execute, and do all other things. And at the same time, you have a proper reference. To the, to the orchestrator of all these things. And behind the scene, the code is creating um, fake worker. By fake, I mean a worker doesn't exist in your host or, uh, uh, yeah, in your environment. It's just code that allows the donkey to evaluate or execute, sorry for the noise, to evaluate or execute the code. And so it's just doing a try catch using Python write primitives to exec or eval code 
but at the same time there's no way to stop this um from the main thread and so i've played around but my main issue here is that i resolve the donkey with let's call it a farmer and this is already updated code so this is not in production this is my own localized experimental thing um the only thing i can think about is that you receive a reference so this farmer is going to be resolved as your reference and so here the catch if you in on your side cache execute evaluate and uh, clear, reset, and kill uh, features from the donkey. I have a bad news for you. I cannot replace those. So the moment you will try, I can kill. I can kill the current worker. But the moment you will try to execute or evaluate again, that's not going to work because your farmer is doesn't have a donkey anymore, unfortunately, <laughs> and so it doesn't work. And so what I can do on my side, but this is my, I wouldn't say the first is actually the third uh, <laughs> iteration because it, it works mostly like the same way we work with the uh, uh, standard input, output or error and uh, in, in, in PyScript. So we create a wrapper so that we can redefine and here I'm reassigning all these methods and properties to the current farmer in our case in PyScript is the IO um, and so you have a reference which is IO and you're gonna have a standard output and standard error that is gonna work and be updated or changed it doesn't matter how you re reference to those and so that's one thing at the same time I'm not sure that Josh is actually um, directly from JavaScript, because from JavaScript, uh, doing something like this, um, const evaluate, um, execute, equal, await, donkey, with your options. So I'm not sure if this is the pattern, because if this is the pattern, this execute, for instance, is going to be trapped forever. And there's no way I can create a new donkey and give it to you the next time you want to call evaluate or execute so this is one of the issue uh, another one is that uh i've been thinking because all this code is inevitably asynchronous so execute and evaluate they happen in a worker so you're gonna pass the code and and, and i wait for it so right now i'm resolving the farmer and re and that's what you get but what if, what if I actually resolve out of the box a wrapper of those primitives and behind the scene, I actually await the thing, the donkey, the new farmer and uh, execute in, in that case. And so here is actually a matter of questioning Josh, how are you using the donkey first? Secondly, I think I can make it a, a very probably not something you cannot perceive as lower, but I just might need an extra await behind the scenes so that you are sure that your farmer, even if you do what, what I worked before, whenever you evaluate or execute next, behind the scene, I'm uh, re giving you different donkeys if if that's needed and killing the previous donkeys and uh um and yeah that's, so that's my main question because otherwise i'm stuck with this thread uh, uh sorry this topic and I, I and i'm not sure what's the best use case and what's the best api for it but i think from your side you should be able from because this is a js feature should be able to do these and at the same time, you should be able to be sure that if you um, execute uh, while through many times, you 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 kill the previous donkey and you so, sorry the previous worker and uh, and you 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 are able to eventually evaluate if something changes in here, like uh, print one. Um, you are able to be sure that the underlying 
thing is working. So this is my first question. So is this pattern what you're using? And the second one is the donkey has a target eventually. You can have an optional target. If you don't provide a, if you provide a target, as an explicit target, everything is fine because that, that target is going to be updated with whatever next. But the donkey, um, we can call terminal dispose, but a new donkey, if, if you call ex execute or evaluate again, um, and the previous donkey was stuck or he never exited, um, at the same time, we are a bit messing up with the DOM. So dispose should, should terminate it, but I will keep appending new, if you didn't specify a target, I will keep appending new sort of targets to show you what's going on. Um, is that okay, understood and desirable as an outcome? Because otherwise that's another bigger issue because I have to replace the previous target with something else. And okay, that, so that and, and, and Andrea, I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, Josh has uh, perhaps five or 10 minutes before he has to take his mum and dad. Okay, it's in by 15 minutes. It's, it's about 15 oh, minutes. Okay, okay, I just want to make sure that you don't have to... You've just been asked all these questions and your answer is, actually, I've got to take my parents to the airport. Um, so actually, we have got some time for you to answer the questions. So my apologies for interrupting. But uh, OK, let's let's. It was the end of the talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I kind of got that sense as well. Yeah, exactly. So uh, so let, let's let's let the uh, talk begin. So, Josh, uh, there were two questions. Uh, the first one was, uh, are you using it in the way that was demonstrated where you get a reference to the eval and the exec and things like that, in which case, how's the uh, spring cleaning going to happen when you want a new donkey? Uh, and also, if you kill a donkey, I, I'm a vegetarian, so uh, that feels a bit strange for me to say that. Uh, but anyway, if you kill a donkey and you have a terminal, what happens to the terminal? Because the terminal will have been terminated and then blah, 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 blah. So we've kind of got two... Um, you know, you, you've got an ex donkey and you've got a new donkey. How do they kind of react to each other in, 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 in that sort of a way? So, Josh. So the good news is, hopefully, is that the way that you showed Andrea of using the URL and exec, um, exactly how you wrote it is exactly how I'm using it. Um, so that's good, hopefully. And terminal, um, I specify a target. So basically what I'm trying to say is that you can basically do whatever and I'll work around it. Whatever you think is best, I think I can work around it from what you've proposed there. Yeah, the, th the, the thing is that you have a single reference to a donkey and you expect the donkey to yeah. update behind the scene. Uh, if sure. you have, so in your case, if you have always an explicit target, that's going to solve a lot of issues for me. At the same time, I want to be sure that you're not, if you're, are, are you trapping the uh, execute and eval, evaluate or, or not? So that's, that's another thing to think about. So, so when I get the eval and exec in the way that you wrote there, I then so was, assign uh, that. It's structuring uh, execute and evaluate. Yes. From the, okay. So yeah. then I, need, I, I know what I need to do. Okay. And what, it's going to be slightly different take on what you have right now, but you will not notice anything different. And it's just more code for me to, 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 to work around the wrapper. And uh, you're going to have an indirect wrapper of the real thing behind the scene. The fact that you're using an explicit target, that's awesome because it means that at least that problem is solved for me. I want to be sure that if other people won't have an explicit target, somehow it still works. Um, that's a matter of uh, integration test, I guess. So don't worry about that. Thanks. Awesome. That, that, that... So there we go, folks. Oh, this is. Probably... All my questions. This yeah. is yeah. This is software engineering in action. There we go. Is uh, <laughs> I I just like how Josh went. Yeah, whatever. I'll just do what you want. <laughs> You're a very easy I'm customer. Not the here. <laughs> oh, no. But how, okay. So here's the thing. Actually, could Josh, could you give us a little yeah. bit of a background as why do you need this feature? You know what's going on with EduBlocks. Blah 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 blah. You know so that we've got we've had a very theoretical 
thought about, you know, what's the donkey? We know it's JavaScript allowing us to evaluate Python code on the fly. The work has warmed up. But why do we need this feature? And I can see Andrea's got his hand up. So I'll let Andrea just talk a little bit and then and then yep. uh, and then Josh. Andrea, sorry. Oh, I, I was proposing something extra. OK. Josh, why don't you give us a perfect integration test so we can be sure that whatever you need is it's covered. <laughs> that would be awesome because Are you uh, wanting a demo. Work. Well, yeah, give us a demo. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Males and uh, give it a go. It's children. Oh, if man. my keyboard this is wants to wake up. A live unprepared demo. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, it's unprepared. No, we're we're no, switching. Right uh... You don't have to do it right now, to be honest. Oh, no, you, I can. You, you have stuff to do, so don't, don't, don't worry about that. Oh, it's no. just post like a, a snippet of a XML page with something that you think to work and is not currently working the way you expect. Yeah. And that would be awesome because we can use it as an integration test and I can do test there and development until yeah. that screen and I can validate your expectations. So that would be awesome. Oh, that no, try again. Yeah. Oh, no. It's destiny, you know, uh, okay. sometimes. Third, third time lucky. Is it going to work? Yes. Yes. Oh, it's well, you can, you can see the Chrome window. Uh, no. 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 It, it's it's right. failed. Again. Let's try one more time. Okay. Uh. Oh no, that didn't work. Oh man, computer. Oh well. Oh well. Never mind. Okay, perhaps uh, through the uh, medium of it, yeah, exactly. I was going to say through the through the medium of interpretive dance, improvised live online uh, josh perhaps you could explain to us uh what what's going on here why do we need this feature yes so uh edge block postscript integration the way that it currently works is you drag your box or write your code in the editor you press the run button and then it starts a process a multi-step process of yeah. uh compiling the config.json uh the main.py all these sort of things yeah Nicholas is doing the interpretive the, the, dance, um, yes, exactly. To, uh, yeah. screen sharing. Uh, and then it, it will upload those files to cloud storage and then it will use that to like render a web page. Um, so that takes around like, I don't know, five to 10 seconds because you're having to do the file upload and then you're having to download PyDi, download the packages, start up worker, all these sort of things, right? Yeah, and each time um, you're recreating the universe afresh, aren't you? Yeah. So, yeah. Yes every time. So even if you change like uh, nothing on the page and press the run button again, it's going to do the whole thing again. Yeah. Um, so I thought there is a much better way to do this because you have all this time where the user is creating their code, right? Why am I not just like doing all these things in the background so that when they press a the run button, it's instant. Yeah. So uh, that then led me on my journey of how do I do this? Oh, and um, clearly, what and you needed is a donkey. Clearly, I, I needed to, to look outside into the real world uh, <laughs> to, to discover what I uh, needed. Um, and there was ways to do it. Like, I could mess around with, like, creating script tags and mm -hmm. um, do all the pie worker stuff. Um, but essentially, what I really wanted was an easy way to buy a JavaScript to say, hey, I want a pie script worker. Uh, to do all PyScripty things, I want you to get set up in the background with a terminal, with all the things that I need, that when I press the run button, I can give you a string yeah. which contains the code, and it's ready to go. Yeah. Um, so it's so warmed up. It's warmed is, up and ready to go, ready to launch. Yeah. The torpedo's in I the torpedo keep, tube. You just got to press the run button. Yeah. yeah. I can keep sending code to it. Yeah. Um, all the time, uh, and it provides a much better experience. So how the fast, end. from the user's point of view, how fast is, you know, I click run, and then is it what, instant? Yeah. Wow, I, and that's that's a big step up from five to 10 seconds, depending on your network connection and browser capabilities. Yeah. Wow. And it's a perception thing, right? Yeah, exactly. If we have saved time from not doing the whole cloud yeah. storage upload thing, um, but we've also saved time because, well, 
No, it's a perception thing because essentially the same things is still happening, like the part of it, but it's happening just at a different time. Yeah. Yeah. When the user doesn't know about it. Yes. Yes. It's not, it's not blocking because it's in a worker. So... Yeah. Exactly. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. So bravo to the donkey. Um, is is all is all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what a great name and i can imagine there are going to be lots of interesting puns uh in the coming weeks as people start to explore uh what this donkey can do just to be clear the don you can already um do this from within PyScript itself by using the work pi worker class and sending it bits of code but your particular use case was that you were wanting to use PyScript from javascript and so the whole donkey yeah. api is actually a javascript api that allows the javascript citizens to become first class citizens and to get all of the mm -hmm. really cool stuff that's that's awesome uh, andrea yeah there i say we introduced the named workers where you can just yeah await a named worker and if that named worker exports uh, exec and eval or yeah. exec execute and evaluate it's going to be exactly the same but that's all confined into the python world yeah there was nothing to 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 provide the same easiness on the on the on the javascript side and so i think josh use case was um, a great example but think this makes exploring the python world and field uh, uh, for everyone else easier because you just you don't you actually don't even need to learn a new thing you just you know exact some python code in the donkey and uh, you don't need to even know what the donkey is executing because you can pass on options with the config with files and with all the kind of things that you mm -hmm. expect it to, to to do and uh, you say hey uh, i don't know matplotlib give me a result and stuff like that you know and uh, I, I think it's cool the potentials are yeah. there but we need to provide something that if if the worker is stuck like th this was the josh request the worker is stuck how do i keep asking donkey to do something else for me because when it's stuck it means either you didn't wait or it's it's just stuck and broken okay it's, uh, it, it's a it, it's a it's an injured donkey and it needs to be humanely yeah put down <laughs> <laughs> you see what i mean by puns <laughs> <laughs> Pros and cons there. Maybe the donkey was hard working, and so the previous task just took forever. Yeah. In that case, you're killing the previous task, whatever it was, because yeah. you're killing a worker and you're creating a new one with, with this proposal. Um, you don't get to know when that's the case because that, that that's the that's the main issue here. You don't know when it's just the environment busy doing something or the environment being stuck with a while through loop yeah. uh, you know that's uh but i guess we can do as much as we can if you await the previous result or await the previous execute and, and everything else you're sure that the previous one ex executed and, and everything uh, if you click a button <laughs> the button says hey forget about whatever i wrote before just run this new thing yeah. now and you want that to happen and yeah. so and and i fully agree that the use case is ace yeah. because at, at that point once we solve that properly um we have both of scenarios you know you can disable the button until the previous thing happened or you can just say hey you're clicking the button again it means that you as a user wants to run the new code and uh, wants to yeah. know the new result and so i fully agree in yeah. everything josh raised as an issue and uh, i want to solve this properly that's that's my only concern awesome awesome so uh that we're we're likely to get lots of complaints from the donkey protection league uh but uh we're, we're promoting donkeys is the important thing um so okay so what's next because uh you know we, we we've done a donkey demo but but before you join josh Andrea said, I've got loads to demo for high script fun so uh whilst you hit let just just lay it all out what we got coming I want to say enjoy the rest of your day to Josh because he, he managed to to join this meeting and uh, don't don't feel bad if you if you need to leave uh, please do I do <laughs> yeah. no, but thank you for, you know, you for showing that yeah. 
Yeah. So see you next time. All right. Bye. I will catch up on the recording. Yeah. Ciao, Everyone ciao. Have a good day. Ciao, All ciao. Right. Bye. Okay. What's next? Uh, it's me and you again. It's me I... and you. And the internet. I'm still recording. <laughs> the internet. Okay. So once again. Oh, inception. Uh, whoa. Hey. Okay. What is this? Rogerism. <laughs> so I discovered um, recently, let's say recently, it was like yesterday or yeah. two days ago. Um, there is a new, a new specification uh, around JSON. Oh. And I digged into this uh, thing. And this thing, basically, long story short, is that, and I I explain in here, so in this readme, and, and I tell you also why I wrote this little uh, yeah. code. Actually, it, uh, I, I can show you, is actually not too much, it's 90 lines of code, but it works. So that, that that's the great news. Um, what's role JSON? Basically, in JavaScript, when you have very huge numbers, they don't translate properly to 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 JavaScript. I, yeah. um, I I hope this is zoomed enough, but th that's yeah, it. That's good. Yeah. So, so you're the, the last three digits are missing. So the eight nine zero at the end are now zero zero zero. Exactly. So in JavaScript we have um, because the JavaScript number format is. Um, is the same the C has, if it, I remember correctly. It's a, it's a float, isn't it? A, a numeric is just a float because there's no difference between a, an integer and... Basically, it has a limited amount of digits. Yeah, exactly. I understand. And so BigInt in JavaScript was introduced to produce bigger integers. So you put the N at the end, and that's a new parsing thing that decides, okay, this is a big int. But at the end of the day, you are representing this number. Yeah. And um, this number, which is a big int, cannot be JSON stringified. Although JSON doesn't specify the amount of <coughs> digits that you can provide yeah. to, to, <laughs> to a number itself. Yeah. So the, this number, actually, in JSON <coughs> is, um, is perfectly valid. And maybe le let me... Let me pipe on this. Can you can you uh, uh, zoom in? Yeah, I will. I will. yeah, can't see it still. Still can't see it. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Great yeah. stuff. Okay. So let me try this. Um, I'm gonna import JSON. Import JSON. And JSON loads history, which is an object. With a field, my begin, yeah, and a very huge number, and you can see it's worked. It, it, it worked. Hey, Python! So, uh, yay! <laughs> now, actually, Python is great because it doesn't have the old issue that JavaScript has with numbers. Yeah, and so I believe that's already uh, an achievement in terms of uh, this specification because. We can eventually post to Django or any Python backend. We can post actually real numbers that yeah. are not uh, clobbered by the, the specific. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the number of bytes you're allowed. <laughs> yes. Let, let me get out of here. Uh, let, let me try node. Um, so I don't need to import anything, but um, there's some parts. And I'm gonna provide the same input. Hey, you yeah. See. Broken. Yeah. No. So, yeah. Row JSON um, was an idea to to provide a way to express your JSON as a string that is gonna be used out of the box into the JSON representation. And so here, there is uh, how it works. So in this case, you're just used seeing me showing off my library, what does it does, but the, the, the standard is the same. So if you have my big int, which is this number, and yep. uh, you, 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 you can see in JS 
when, when you have that notation, so my my yeah, this is exactly that yes. notation. Yeah. This is and if you have a type of um oh sorry. Type of my begin um No, there's a T Y P E. Ah. Yeah. It's a big int. So it's a primitive. The big yeah. int is a primitive. Um, so there are two in this in this proposal, which is already landed in Chrome, I don't know, a while ago, because Chrome is always fast to ship stuff that's interesting. Yeah. Um, JSON is raw JSON, uh, tells you if my big int. Um, it is actually a, 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 a raw JSON thing, and it's not. But if you try, if you try here, like I had had this this warning. If you if you try to stringify a big integer, um, yeah. it doesn't know how to do that because it's not part of the JSON specification. So this pack allows you to eventually JSON stringify. Uh, my begin, which I already created as a reference, so this is gonna be. Oh, come on, don't do that. Uh, have you have you uh, okay. have you used your your library? Is it referencing your library? Pro JSON. So my begin. Ah, right. Okay. So in this case. Now th this is native node. It's not using yeah. my library. My library just produce exactly the same results is, yeah. uh, is just not in here. This is native node JS 22, 20, whatever. Um, and, and you see, JSON representation is correct. Yeah. So this is what this is what I'm, I'm getting. But what is the caveat here is that um, sorry about that. Um, if I JSON parse, Because JSON is a very yeah. old standard on the web, and we don't want to break it. Yeah. You see, what 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 was stringified is definitely nowhere. Yeah. Um, similar. Yeah. So, this specification. Um, oh gosh, let me let me get that so I can clear, and we start again. This specification. This specification um, asks users to provide a reviver, and the reviver, let me make it simple. So I just I just passed the JSON row begin. Yeah. Um, the reviver is, uh, is a function that has a key and a value. And in this case, just for demo sake, I, I gonna, um, oh, sorry. And there is, and there is something that doesn't quite match and is a primitive. We also have a context. Yeah. So for simplicity sake, I'm just returning a big int in the context source. And that's exactly, see, oh. that's exactly this. So, right. Okay. I so I want to hang on, hang on, hang on. So what's that context? object then and what's dot source on that so the context oh. is oh so here are, the specs. here are the specs yeah it's a valid question so the context um i can do console log text and returning nothing um but you see the context is a reference with a source field contains the original string right that created the value yeah so basically the string so this is the was, uh, yeah this is this is the uh, yeah it, it, it's the characters that haven't yet been parsed into a value when i do json stringify um json uh row json My begin, 
That's exactly the string that produces yeah. the um, begin. So, and also this is just just for clarity's sake. This is literally my begin. So, in my, my begin, it's a type of uh, begin. Yeah. And once stringified, it becomes all the digit it represents. Yeah. And so, in this case. Based on row JSON, my begin provides a special that serialized value. value. Yes, exactly as it was. Yeah. But the issue here that this proposal is trying to solve is that um, JSON parts whatever the if I the, the, the is, is not correct. Yeah. JSON part historically doesn't understand two big integers so yep. in this case i'm just providing um uh str so i'm just providing sorry no the value the value the uh, the value is the is the um is this number yeah which saying. is wrong we don't want that <laughs> and then the context when, the context is the that, yeah whatever. Whenever there is a context, because this is an optional thing, so this is not necessarily there. Yeah. Is that all need for primitives? And when it's a primitive, in this case, I'm sure it's a primitive. Um, I can I can return just begin. But this is a made up, you know, is a made up um, uh, context source. This is a made up demo. Yeah. And uh, the yeah. the real thing that I have to do in, in my code um, is this. So I have to the reviver that I'm using is checking: is there a context? Yeah. Is the type of value a number? Yeah. Because and the string value of that the, the the string of the value is it different from context source? And here I can tell you that this yeah. number, if I, if I string these, which is what 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 I receive, um, in uh, yeah from the uh, value, it's been misinterpreted. Uh, yes. So it's a number. The value is different from context source. So in this case, yes, and it's a begin. Yeah. From the context source, not from the value, because the value lost already yeah. details. Um, yeah. Otherwise, is the value itself. So that means that this reviver, uh, yeah. and this is just a helper I'm providing out of. It's a library. it's a lovely ternary operator you've got there, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. My, my goal here it was to be ninety log file to provide. Yeah, something. exactly. I was just I was just admiring it. It's like, hmm, that's really uh, that he, he's written that really well. Uh, you know. <laughs> okay, I, I, I tell you why. I tell you why. So if you go in MDN and you check the polyfill and you check what's going on. Um, okay, this is the easy one. Wait, wait for it. There is a proper polyfill, and uh, it's not ninety logs. So it's a whole parser of the entirety of JSON. And wow. I didn't want to go down that road. Yeah. So I thought, okay, it's a bit too much because here it's parsing every single child. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how about no? <laughs> how about no? Um, and in my case, probably shame on me. Uh, you know the meme, uh, the the like. Uh, I, I I had an issue. I solved with regular expressions, and now I have now I have two problems. <laughs> Yes. That's, that's, that's basically it. So yeah. JSON is a pretty easy format because it either has stuff in, in quotes, double quotes, not even random quotes. Yeah. It either has stuff in double quotes, which is the first match. So it removes double quotes from the equation and you can have key as quotes and values as quotes because keys are strings. Yeah. Values uh, might be string too. Otherwise, he has this number convention. Every number with the EE e for E notation, exponential yeah. notation, plus the dot for uh, uh, floating points and minus for negative numbers. 
and then true, false, null. And this is actually the entirety of the JSON notation. So yeah. it looks scary yeah. when you look at that, but it, check out the packages. And it's, it's exactly either all our strings. And so you can see the, yeah. the strings is, is everywhere. Um, otherwise, it's going to be uh, so if I put a number in here, it's going to be a number. It can be one, two. Oh, I can't edit that. Because uh, okay. you're not in edit mode. Oh, sorry. I thought it was <laughs> my editor. Hmm. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was silly of me. No, no not worry. So um, you can have like one, two, three. No, that, that, that's easy. And it will bond one, E, ten. I don't know what yeah. I'm writing, but it is all valid JSON or is going to be true, now false. Um, and that's it. That's yep. it. That's the reason yep. it. So I thought that uh, using the um, regular expression, in this case, would have saved me a lot of extra code and complexity uh, to just provide something that, uh, to sum up the, the reason this project exists, is that we do communicate with Python <laughs> quite yeah. a lot. Uh, I would like to understand what numbers don't match. So, yeah. because we, we, with Python, we can forward numbers, but <laughs> don't necessarily get the numbers back. Yeah, know? exactly. So like, uh, we, we, look, we, we might lose uh, information about primitives that are very important and very um, uh, I mean, very important in the Python world that are less important in the JavaScript that cannot come back yeah. as important as yeah. they are in the Python world. Yeah. So um, this basically was my attempt. And you, you can see it's an ungap. Uh, ungap is a project that is just trying to fill the gap between the modern browsers and modern standards because yeah. they don't always match. Yeah. And so this is, um, uh, this is not patching the global JSON. It is just providing uh, the functionality, but it's not, there's no global this in here. It's just yeah. exporting functionality from JSON and that's it. Yeah. And so this was my attempt to be sure that whenever we have an issue with matplotlib, numpy, or this kind of libraries, yeah. we, which are common, um, I want to be able to sure that we forward to the JSON world original intent and we can forward back the original intent yeah. too so that both Python and uh, by JSON and, uh, um, you, and JavaScript by this yeah. new thing yeah. and can, can communicate with each other without losing data. There's, um, there's, there's, there's parity. Do you know what this reminds me of? It's like uh, that famous story about the NASA probe where some people were using centimeters, you know, you know, metric, and the others were using imperial. And <laughs> they lost the probe because it just, like, shot off in the wrong direction because... Uh... I don't know. I'll give you my story. Um, because I work with the uh, web map-related projects... Yeah. Uh, with making names and everything is is just even GPS coordinates can have a very good arbitrary precision after the floating point. Yeah. And I still remember this day where we were from out of those coordinates zooming out and zooming in to the same place and it wasn't actually matching the same yes. place from the original. Because the last three digits had been but, or whatever. Yeah. So digits were lost yeah that was for me it was uh, like oh what, what are we doing yeah um it's true that the precision is not that bad i mean lose some precision out of that decimal point but but, but here's the thing but a lot of our users yeah yeah a lot of our users are data scientists <laughs> and they really care about, <laughs> about this stuff you know you don't want your numbers changing from underneath you dep depending on you know how the serialization is working um, all right last thing for today because yeah we're already out of time yeah 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 yeah, um, yeah so last thing um this is just the dumbest thing i've ever wrote but oh quite possibly the smartest <laughs> so um because i'm working with this um template yeah so i'm i'm, I'm trying to help 
um, about um, templating in uh, in Python two. Yeah, and I try. And I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people. What I what I've learned recently is that Python, actually, the the parser, the HTML parser, is smart enough to understand also X HTML things. Yeah. What's X HTML things? So this is basically the way you 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 write. Um, yeah, we have a test. Uh, so if you write this kind of input, this kind of attribute, or anything close to that, so any any slash close tag yeah. at the end, yeah. um, it has a meaning in an X XML and X HTML. It doesn't have a meaning in modern. HTML, so that if you have, for instance, um, oh, I don't know how to demo this. Uh, well, let me try. Uh, if you have a string like this, uh, do you want to zoom it in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you try to do span, span. Let's see. Uh, well, you've got two nodes then, uh, because oh. they open and close oh. at the same time. But the result on that so. Let me let me let me create um, a blank page. So I, I I'm gonna do document body um, HTML span span. It could be any any other element literally yeah. on the HTML namespace except. Or uh, void elements. Void elements are like input, source, yeah. or all those elements that do not accept anything else. So they are just standalone elements. Yeah. So actually, let me add an input in there. So I can I can do this. I can do this, right? I, you see the input. Now yeah. I'm gonna expect the element, and I have a span that is containing an element span. Where, Why where, where, what? No, you can't do that. <laughs> Hang on. So my intent was to have. To span and an input. Yes. Consecutively, right? Yes, that's and kind of what I thought. In the XML world, not, that's what you would get. Yeah, that's not how it works in uh, HTML. In, yeah. Yeah. So in HTML, what you need to do is um, have a new DOM parser um, parse. You, you you need to let it know that it's XHTML, which has to be strict HG, strict XML. Um. Exactly. So I, I'm gonna. Well, I don't remember if that's the right name. Yeah, that's from string. Um, and I have this, and I have to tell it because otherwise it's gonna throw anyway because there's no uh argument two okay if i tell it's um text html, HTML yeah it comes back how it was with them inside each other yes yeah, that's you see is exactly okay yeah 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 now change that to x html text h x yeah exactly i just gonna do this well all, all that can... yeah any other non-text HTML thing is gonna is gonna parse the same. It's gonna yeah. fall back to the XML parser for SVG and everything else. Yeah. So and here I have a parser. Uh -huh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. XML. I remember now. <laughs> requires. I'm I'm just using XML as a as a domain name. It could be any name. It could mm. be just X. Yeah. Like, wow. Okay. You need to put it in the. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we have a root node now, and um, and then they're consecutive. Yes. Also, so yeah, this this project is about giving you the same XML ability to write your what you mean is what you get. Yeah. But uh, ported to the HTML world. And so it's a work in progress. I think I think it shouldn't do anything more than this. And uh, I can show you what what, what it does. Yeah. Uh, do I 
Yeah. Um. Wait, wait for me. Uh, X. Okay. Uh, nope. I'm running a server here. Okay, sorry. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, let's go test. Cool. We we'll test, and you, you, you're seeing nothing special in here, but yeah. basically, basically. All you have is um, it's me typing input for test. Yeah. But, but I could I could type what we were doing span just now. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So span, 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 and there you. Go. There we go. Yeah. And awesome. So the, the library is extremely simple terse and it does the minimum amount of things to provide you a way to write JSX or XML like templates yeah and for X HTML like templates um, with all with all the issue around those because I give you an example if I if I have an attribute um, and, and, and it's like this one one is fine right so I gotta have um, attribute one, yeah. it's all good. But differently from JSX, if I have just attribute and this is a template literal interpolation, yeah, I'm supposed to put one in there. That's an invalid XML. And what I love about this is, is that it provides an error just like we do on PyScript. I was just going to so, say that looks familiar. Which <laughs> contains the following error: as soon as you write a wrong template. Yeah. It tells you on the page or when, yeah. whatever that template is going to land. It tells you that something is wrong. And I actually love it. So I have a tiny library that is like 20 lines of code, comments included, yeah. <laughs> that is telling you what you're doing wrong. And I love it. And so because, because um, I want to have feature parity between the Python parser mm. for HTML and XHTML out of the box, and the JavaScript side. I think this was this was a lovely uh, little thing to to play around with, and and it works wonderfully. Yeah. So that's that's it. That's actually it for me uh, today. <laughs> Unless you have questions, because it's no. all you here. Yeah. Uh, Andrea, as always, uh, you know, incredibly interesting and entertaining and a lot of fun to see this kind of uh, fun, fun for engineers. I mean, I mean, it's this is not the sort of thing you'd want to sort of show to your grandma and say, hey, what do you think of that? You know, um, but it, it's the, I mean, for an engineer, this is really, really interesting and fascinating. And I, I'm intrigued to know how is that work with the python community when it comes to that that pep that you're you're involved in how's that going so the the pep 750 is uh, is the one that's paul to, yeah yeah is the one i, I try to contribute to and um basically there were questions around how's the templating going in javascript and i and I think I provided enough information yeah. to let them do the right thing. Their things, yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the same time, that was the reason I investigated how I asked, okay, imagine I want to create a lit HTML or a UHTML or any library template based library that yeah. is famous on the JavaScript world. I would like to provide a similar thing on the Python world, and that has to work both. For server-side rendering and on the DOM, yeah. Eventually, for our use case, uh, you can just provide yeah. uh, that content out of the box. Yes, exactly. And that, and that lovely. Um, and so I provided all the hints to. Actually, just raised all the questions about things. Yes. Because I want, I would love for that pep to be um, to produce a template that is great enough to produce anything you want to do uh, at all because what 
surely the the history on the web is that even with JSX, pro pro probably JSX is one of the best um, example among uh, lit HTML or UHTML. Yeah. Um, is that you 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 want to express yourself in a way that reason well to you when yeah. you create elements and reactivity and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, the disambiguation between is it to create a Django server page or a static HTML or is it to create a dynamic thing? Whatever that means, it can be virtual DOM or it can be something else. Yeah. Um, right now, the feeling I have is that all directions are moving toward the same goal. Yeah. So having having a way to express yourself as much as you want and to 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 have all the details around templates. Yeah. Um, that are super useful to for, for, for anyone else to create libraries around, helpers around. Yeah. And and it doesn't confine a single use case like only server side rendering yeah. uh, streams or um, front end or virtual DOM yeah. or so it's super open at this point. Um, and yeah, I'm 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 just hoping Let's it's, see how it goes, uh, I think. It's yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking it's, it's it's gonna be good enough and I told them whenever you have any any way any anything that I can try to play around with I would be more than happy to yeah. to bring some tiny bits of my libraries in there because it's going to be super fun. Fantastic. <laughs> and it's going to be super fast as well yeah. because if it's natively behind the scene, either C Python or eventually MicroPython, I don't know, yeah. um, it's going to be it's, it's going to be cool. Yeah, and yeah, it's gonna yeah. Work, it's going to be implemented in C. Well, <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. Cool. Well, uh, we're kind of uh, coming up to the hour uh, of, of PyScript fun. Um, uh, uh, thank you very much, Andre, for your contributions. Like I said, as always, they're, they're entertaining, they're informative, and, uh, and all of that good stuff. Um, I'm going to stop the video now and then upload this to YouTube so folks can watch it at home. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>